Every Mustang tells a story, whether it's a modern Mustang whose story is still being written or a classic Mustang whose story goes back over 50 years. Well, today we're going to tell you the story of this beautiful 1967 Mustang convertible. So a Mustang story is always best told by its owner, and I have Dan here, the owner of the 67 convertible, and I'm going to step away and let him tell you the story of this beautiful car. So this is my 1967 Mustang convertible. It's a C-code, uh, originally C4, deluxe interior, uh, air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, a few other uh, goodies in there that uh, it came with from Ford. I originally found this car, uh, I guess about 30 years ago. I was a little kid in my, in my neighborhood and my grandmother lived uh, just down the road from my parents and this car was sitting in a garage. And as a little kid, I'd ride my bicycle past that garage and I'd peek in it every day. Even after I was in college, I'd come back and I'd, I'd stop by, and everybody knew I'd do it, and go peek in a garage. And about uh, three years ago, the owner passed away. My mother mentioned to me and she said, you know, you should really go talk to the owners and, and see if they'd be willing to sell it. I, knew, I know you've obsessed over this car for years. And I went and uh, talked to the owner's widow and I said, you know, I, if you give me a chance, I'd, I'd really like to, like to buy it if you ever decide to sell it. And so a few months later, she called me and said, you know, I, I think I'm ready to, ready to pass the car along. So I went back a second time and looked at it. And I made her an offer and she accepted. And uh, I actually owned the car before I ever saw it run, before I ever saw it out of the garage. I, I, I wanted this car. When I first saw the car, it was the first time I'd ever even seen it out of the garage. I mean, she let me into the garage and it was like the light shone down on this thing in the garage because I'd never even seen it outside of the cover. I knew it was a Mustang in there. Didn't even know it was a convertible other than my mother telling me that it was. Nobody ever got to see the thing. And I, I had that opportunity and it didn't matter what it was. I, I wanted that car because it was just that thing I had to have. I actually had to sell a Jeep in order to buy it. It was, it was you know, this Jeep I loved, but nothing could compare to this car. When I first actually bought it, I'd never seen it drive. I'd never even heard it start, nothing. I had no idea what the condition of it was. I feel pretty lucky it was in pretty good condition, but I had to have that car and was willing to do whatever I could to get my hands on it. So a lot of people ask me why you obsess so much over this car. And the only thing I can really think of is that I remember riding my bicycle to my grandmother's house and it's just part of like that memory of my grandmother and riding there you know, as a little kid. I mean, it was, it was just that every day seeing that car in that garage and standing on my tiptoes. And it's so much about the memory of, of that car and, and the things around it. It's not just the car, it's, it's everything that is combined there to, to really make it feel like it's mine. So since I acquired the car, um, I got fairly lucky that my next door neighbor back home was a mechanic. And he was about to retire. And the first thing I did was say, Yogi, can you, can you do one of your famed dual exhausts on this car? Because it was a single exhaust and it was pretty shabby. So he took it and uh, did the uh, dual exhaust on it, put on headers while he was in there. And then we found out that it didn't have any brakes. So a quick call and ended up with uh, four wheel discs from Stainless Steel Brake Company. Um, oddly enough, somebody had actually converted it back to drums in the front. So that was quite the surprise. Since then, we uh, wanted to tear the engine apart just to freshen it up a little bit, found out that it had a broken rocker. So lo and behold, another engine rebuild. And unfortunately, that led into, well, you know, we should rebuild the transmission and the transmission ended up having a T5 swap. And then we did the interior because the seats had started to crack because they were original and they weren't very comfortable anymore. Then we rebuilt the, uh, the entire fuel system. So it is the poster child for don't let your car sit ever, especially uh, in the case of this one, it sat for seven years unstarted or even touched for that matter. So all the mods have been basically making it more reliable. So when I first talked to Shirley about buying the car, she said, you know, it was originally silver. And one day my husband took it and I wanted it to be silver. My daughter wanted it to be blue and my husband wanted it to be red. It came home red. So that was the story of how it ended up being red. So I really wanted to find out more about the silver because it doesn't have a color on the door tag. Um, it was a special order and that just was a burning thing for me to find out really what it was. So I got a moderate report on it and um, it had nothing on it. They had no way to determine the color. So I, it does have the original buck tag, it's a Matuchin car, and lo and behold, it's actually a silver frost convertible, um, special order because uh, the, the buck tag actually has the paint coat on it. So when this car was originally ordered from the Pittsburgh Ordering District, it was a C4 289 C code. Uh, it had a deluxe interior, power top with a glass backlit window. It had um, power steering, power brakes, 
uh, air conditioning, tilt wheel. You know, I wish it had a 390 in it, but it was pretty well loaded um, from the factory when it was purchased. My immediate plans are uh, just cleaning up some wiring, get a new top for it, just, just clean it up for a nice, nice driver. I would say my 15, 20 year plan would probably be a rotisserie going back to very similar to stock, but I want something that will get out of its own way at a red light. I like a little bit of classic and a little bit of the modern stuff, as you can tell by the 17 inch wheels. I think it just gives a little bit of an updated look to it, but ultimately it's, uh, I really want to have some body work done to it just to clean it up and freshen up the paint. We want to thank Dan for bringing out his beautiful 67 Mustang convertible and telling us the amazing story behind it. If you own a Mustang with an amazing story and a customer of us here at CJ's, let us know in the comments below.